Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, between the two of us, who do you think would be most likely to become famous over nothing, and why? Ugh, uh, it's unfortunately me because I <laughs> fucking hate everything. And I mean, if you've seen any of the clips from this, I mean, Jesus Christ, the the engagement we got from my hot take on the grocery carts. You know? What oh I mean? like, man, absolutely. Yeah, oh, you, I, I immediately when I read this, I'm like, well, it's going to be Doug because Doug is yeah. the one who would welcome it the least and it would affect him the worst. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Without I a, mean, I, I, the, the clip I had about curling, you know, <laughs> someone wrote, you obviously haven't tried curling. Get out there and do it. I'm like, yeah, obviously I haven't, but no. I played shuffleboard. <laughs> you obviously haven't tried curling. Right. Yeah. And I don't, I don't plan on it. I honestly I could, don't know many people. I personally <laughs> haven't met anyone that has. As if it's like, oh, yeah, just head on down to the corner curling uh, gym. There's only just- one place that I've ever heard had curling. It was at a bar in Chicago called Kaiser Tiger. And in the winter, they have an outdoor shuffleboard thing that they turn into a curling rink. And that's the yeah. only place in my life that I've ever heard that does curling. And so unless you know where Kaiser Tiger is. In the springtime, they get in really fashionable outfits and goose step around. You know, exactly. It's a for the fun Kaiser, bar. Yeah. You know, very interesting. You know? They only serve Pilsners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think it would be, unfortunately, be me just because um, <laughs> Without a most shadow of the things I see on here and I clip out, I'm like, I think this is funny. Uh, but I often find out that's just like, I don't know. We've gotten such just like, we don't get a lot of positive feedback. <laughs> Our, our engagement tends to skew more towards the fuck you it's, guys. It's always the people that are like, hey, I'm going to take time out of my day yeah. to tell you why someone who's pulling the cart from the front actually may, you know, it's very ableist of you to call them out for doing that. It's Dude, like, really? That that clip, that clip got so, that caught like wildfire. And yeah. we got so much anger, so much yeah. anger on that one. And it was that was like the best morning ever. Just it was, watching yeah, those mean, just roll in. You're like, oh man, I all of like, you people. I've never seen anyone because they're like, wow, can you imagine what it's be like to marry to this guy? I was like, yeah, uh, she knows. <laughs> I remind her every day. I mean, let, forget being married. Imagine what it's like to, to live in this head. It's rough. Right. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh man. It's like, geez, geez, Karen. It's just, do you really give a shit? I was like, listen. I I don't know. I don't see you putting a podcast out there sharing your thoughts with the world. <laughs> right. Rusty. The you best, know? <laughs> the best part that like, I, I don't know if they, if A, they don't realize it. And I, I feel like it's that or or B, they're just leaning into it. I, I think it's the fact that they don't realize it because the same thing happens with standups is you look at them and go, guy, this is, this is a podcast. Like we're joke. Like a, yeah. half of what we're saying, we feel but we don't feel that strongly about like we're yeah. obviously some things we lean into way more like the amount of time during your day that occupy that your brain is occupied with thoughts about carts is not as much as everyone thinks it is based on no. that clip. Like you would those people that were commenting would have you believe that Doug s- wakes up and is like, oh, I wonder who the fuck I'm going to see at the store today. Right. Or <laughs> like the fact the that people thought. are like, they're like, imagine being a guy who records this. I was like, I don't know. Have you listened to a podcast ever? Like it's just it's jokes, I mean, guys. It's I jokes. Yeah. Often see a lot. Some of the best clips come from people who are ranting and raving about the yes. littlest things, you know, because they have just a, a I, fucking Anthony Jeselnik was commenting on the woman in Florida who had the OnlyFans decal on her car. Oh, know? was he? Yeah, it was great. He's basically like that is one of the class most classless people I've ever heard of. Like he goes, listen, OnlyFans, good for you. He goes, you need to, uh, all, you know. Advertise for Ellen Pans, girl, go get that bag. He's like putting a decal on the same car that you used to drop your kids off at school. You're a fucking <laughs> idiot. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, that's that's yeah. that's, that's that's gross. Like, right. that's really gross. Like, just yeah. And guess what? We had the same thought. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it's out there, man. Like, people are just talking about shit. And hey, we're a couple of nobodies. It's all good. It's fine. We do this because we have fun or whatever. Dorks. It's just. 
it's just one of those things where I'm like, where someone's like, I got to pause my day, my viewing to right. sit down and, and say, Hey, you're making a big deal out of nothing. I'm like, welcome to the human experience. Yeah. Well, welcome to modern day where we make a big deal out of nothing. Well, here's the thing I'll say to that too, is to all those people, uh, God bless you. Because, and this is coming from a guy, this is the non-fundy Christian one. That's from, mm -hmm. that's Doug, right? right. This yeah. is coming from, God bless you guys. Because that's just engagement. That's all that yeah. is. Right. So keep, keep them coming. Yeah. We will, we accept all. Sure. Share it with your I friends. Say be like, all, check but, these you know, guys out. I, have, I do have some mod moderation settings on, so we don't accept all. But, right. you know, share your thoughts, gang. We're pretty liberal with what we allow in there. Yeah. 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 Butt stuff. I tell you what, I think it was the mankini from last week. <laughs> Most people were like, uh -huh. not touching this one. <laughs> I don't yeah. think people really. <laughs> it amazes me how 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 uncomfortable stuff like that makes people. Yeah. The idea of a, of a listen, a mankini, I don't think it's very attractive. But right. the idea of like. Even discussing a man, Kenny, I think just puts so many dudes off. I'm just like, relax, relax. Why? You're going to be okay. I, if someone's got the cojones to wear those, fucking great. Good for yeah. you. Because I don't. Listen, Lord knows I think it's I one of the silliest things I've ever seen. It's fantastic. Just because it's, you know, listen, just wear a Speedo. That's cool with me. The idea that you're like, I have to have this thing strapped over my shoulder like <laughs> suspenders amazing. to keep yeah. my balls, my dick and balls in place. It's like, all right, whatever. You know, you do you. I don't mad that people wear it, but the idea of like you mentioned, people are like, oh. <laughs> it's like, ah, fucking right. relax, you know? <laughs> There's way worse things out there. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, Justin, Jesus. if you were to get hmm. famous overnight for something you said, what, if you could guess, is it said or do? I, I forget what the question was. I closed it. Um, <laughs> well, uh, get famous over, I think it said over nothing and why. Yeah, over nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. What's the most? So it could what, be what either think, one. Yeah. What do you think it would be? Oh, man, that's a really good. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like just with the amount that we the amount of stuff that we put out from this podcast i feel yeah. like it would have to default to something that was said or yeah. done on this podcast um the only other thing i could think of is uh i don't know i still have the fear going to the gym that i'm going to do some something wrong or use some piece of equipment wrong and i'm going to yeah. be you know or i <laughs> i see all the people uh so we do the center uh Doug and I did the center uh, app for our, uh, our fitness. And when some of the weightlifting things, they have you do like a superset. And so they'll have you do a 30, like uh, on, with heavier weights, uh, uh, six reps at a 30% incline, six reps at a 15, six reps at a, at a zero. And every time I do six reps, I get up, I move it down. I sit down, I do six reps. I get up, move it down. I have to, I think in my head, I'm like, do some of these muscle heads just think like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Cause I feel silly. So like, it's, it's something oh, like funny. that. I feel like something like that would go viral. And I'd that's be like, the thing as well. I was it's like, just... look at this guy adjusting his bench and be like, you guys are fucking dicks. He's only doing six, six reps. Yeah. <laughs> like different. Anyone with a brain and a protractor <laughs> could look at that and say, he's doing a different angles. He's affecting different things. You know? Yeah. But I mean, Doug, not a lot of people bring their protractor to the gym. I know you and I are different. In I do. Regard. It's in my I know you and I are time. different. I always have a protractor. I, I, I see very few people pulling that out at the gym. Quick gym story. Actually, yes. now that you mentioned it, I had a good interaction with, with a dude uh, it's a guy Another, that's there. two good interactions for you, right? Yeah, yeah. right. And uh, I was uh, I was doing some incline uh, stuff, and uh, this guy came over. He's like, "Hey, man, is it cool if like I I work it into a set?" I'm like, "Yeah, go ahead, no problem." And then I finished up. I go, "Hey, this is my last set. If you want this bench, whenever I'm done, you can have me." He's like, "Oh, that's great." So I did. I was like, "All yours." He was like, "Super grateful and everything." Yeah. And then I was going to go on and do a different chest exercise. I was looking to do like some. Uh, uh, cable pulls for like flies. Sure. But the cable machine was occupied. The other places where I could do cable things were occupied. The uh, chest fly machines, both of them were occupied. Oh boy. I looked for just a straight bench, all occupied. But there was one other incline bench that was available that I was just on. It was a different one, but it was exactly the exact same thing. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I left. Walked around, came back, and then was doing. And I was doing it like right by this guy. And I did a couple sets. He came over. He goes, "Hey, man, why'd you give up the bench?" I was like, "I was looking to do flies, but all the other ones were taken. So in this situation, I take what I'm given, and I did this." And he's like, "That's cool, man." He's like, "He's like, oh, that's, he goes he can't, he can't. multiple times. He's like, dude, you're a big dude. Like you're a big fucking guy. He's like, you know, flies are good. He goes, you know, you should try. You should try like." 
the, the, the cable machines. I go, I know. And I pointed over, I go occupied. He's like, ah, shit. Yeah. 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 Go, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was doing. But like, he was, <laughs> he was super cool. He's like, what's your name? I was like, what's your yeah, name? Yeah, and like, yeah. it was just, it was a really nice interaction where I love how he came over. He, he could have just let it go, but he's like, Hey man, Hey man, why'd you give, why'd up? You give up? The like bench? what's, what's yeah. going on? I was like, I, I realized I how this pressuring looks. you. Was I? Yeah. I was like, I realized how this looks, right? I just gave it up and then yeah. immediately moved to a different bench. You know, he was just kind of like, what's going on? I'm like, ah, it's, it's, yeah. everything's, it's busy in here right now. And I, I work with what I got. So, you know, yeah. it is what it is. I think if anything, you get known, you'd be known for probably a clip like. Just finger blasted ourselves. It was great. <laughs> I, you know? it was, And you know what? I stand by it. It was great. It was great. You know, everything's, everything's awesome. That's what they say. Everything's awesome. Especially so. when you're in the subway. You got that one? Uh, stand by. Surprise, motherfucker. That was it, right? That was me. You hear that all the time? Yep. <laughs> I say that a lot. I would lick the pole. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the two. Yeah. I should organize these better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, um, uh, Justin... This was, this was, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Do we have it? Do we have it? Do we, hold on. Another one where I'm like, here we go. This is a Mind Gap exclusive. 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 I haven't heard that one in a while. Yeah. So this just, this just came up. Justin, a couple weeks ago, uh, while he was, you know, was this when you were, yeah, it was when you were doing your, uh, your tour to uh, all the different uh, sewers, sewer systems, sewers, yep. sewer systems. Yep. Um, you flew on a plane and you sent me a message that I was like, holy shit. Yeah. We got to talk it, about this on the podcast and we totally fucking forgot for a yep. couple weeks. And I was like, how do we forget about this? So, Justin, what's your news? What did you tell me? I, 40 years after coming into this world, finally used the bathroom on an airplane for the very first time. Oh, my gosh. Listen, I'm just saying. Let's. let's oh, boy. You know, well, that deserves it. A- <laughs> Tell oh, me I about. Was, I was hoping I was going to get the Mario level up music. God damn it. Uh, uh-uh, no, that's gross. Uh, every time I do that, ah. I, I always throw it out there. You haven't expected it yet. And you're always like Gugh, grossed nope. out by it. So I do yeah. not like it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, tell so- me, tell me about your airplane <laughs> bathroom experience. <laughs> so I was, I was, uh, the, the trip to California is always longer than like, mentally. I, I know how long the flight is. But during the flight, I'm always like, we got to be close. And then they're like, I, I'll, I'll look at the tracker and it's like an hour and a half. I'm like, God damn it. Like, we're so, we're not close. Or, and so I was, I think we're, we're just over an hour away. And uh, I was like, man, I, I got to, if we were anywhere, if we were under 45 minutes, I'd hold this. But I, I'm going to piss my pants if I don't. Like, this, there's, there's no way. So I was like, it's, it's game time. So waited and waited and waited. I got up, made my way to the back. And again, Never done this before. So I had no, I don't even know what the inside of the, like all my only reference point is from film and, and TV, right? So yeah. I have no idea what I'm walking into. So I, I go to the back. I imagine and, you went to like the crew quarters and you were just like, do I just do it in here? There's a little <laughs> hole in here. Do I do you just like peeing in whatever hole you can find? Do I, un, do I take this door off? What happens? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? <laughs> so so You're peeing in everyone's in-flight meal. Right. <laughs> just, I, I so don't know where to go. You're peeing in the coffee machine. <laughs> You've obviously oh. seen a coffee machine before. I thought it was different on the airplane. I don't know. I've never done this. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I walk back to the back, you know, past the flight attendants who are sitting there. And, and it I it did struggle with because I thought there were two back there and there wasn't. So I did do that. Like I lingered for a little too long looking for another one. So I'm standing back in their little quarters looking around <laughs> I'm sure they had this thought of like, ah, oh Christ, what is this one doing now? Yeah, right. I just saw the one. I'm like, all right, cool. So I went in and it is way smaller than I thought it was. Holy shit. I knew it was small, but man, <laughs> that was that was some cramped quarters. Yeah. Uh, and it I it took me a solid like 90 seconds to two minutes to to really familiar like because everything is like really well compartmentalized and hidden mm-hmm. under this and the toilet paper's here and this is a tr- like, so I couldn't, I was like, all right, where is everything first to get acclimated? And then I put the toilet seat up to, to begin going and immediately we hit, uh, we hit turbulence <laughs> and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> so I'm pissing everywhere. Baby. So, I'm just I'm pissing, yeah, so I'm sitting there just like, like <laughs> trying to brace myself in there. I'm like, I got it. Here we go. 
uh, finished it up and, and walked out. And I was like, well, there you go. I can knock that off the bucket list. And the first person yeah. I was like, we landed. And I'm like, Doug, you're never going to guess. Dude, now imagine if you had to take a shit in there. No. See, that's I feel like I would have shit my pants before I took a shit. In there. I don't think I could have done that, man. Like why? Just because it was so small? Well, it was so small, but also like just the the peer pressure, like knowing that because how busy the bathroom, like when you are looking to go to the bathroom, yeah. I don't pay attention to it normally. But when you're waiting for someone to get out and you see like you see other people like on the edge of their seats, you're like, all right. So there's there's an there's an unspoken cue here. Like we, we've all queued up and I've got to figure out what place I am in that queue based off of who's leaning forward the most. Yeah. And so like I was like, if they walk so in many- there, listen, you take a shit. You're going to, you know, that little, the, that little flap there is going to be covered with shit. You know, that's the that's other thing. Know. I'm like, oh, man, this doesn't because I always thought you'd hit the flush button. And it was that like there was I can't remember what comedy film, or Tommy Boy where he gets his mm-hmm. tie stuck it was like yeah. it immediately grabbed him. And so I was expecting like some like deep air pressure coming out of that hole. And I hit it and I, I was like, oh my God, it's not flushing. And then it was like, like second and a half later it opened, but it closed real quick. And I'm like, oh, that's nothing like the movies make it look. Yeah. But I was like goes, that. Yeah, Cause if it's a real slopper, yeah. I mean, that one's not, you well, know, that's, the, you're, that's a multi flush thing. And you're right. Like it's, it's going to get caked on everywhere. So I was like, yeah. there's, there's not enough, <laughs> there's not enough pressure. There's no what, there's no rinse cycle. And uh, yeah. like, that's just going to stick there. So I, I would never want to be in that position. I pray to God I'm never in that position. Now, Devin, imagine take now. Play. Take take for a moment. Here it is. Really, really think about it. Uh-huh. If, I really wish you would have taken a moment to sit down and pee and think about <laughs> what I had said <laughs> about how it's hard. Like if right. you have to, you, when you shit, you also piss. That is law, gentlemen. It's law. I don't well, want to hear about it. Also, something that I noticed was that toilet bowl is not standard size, right? Nope. That is not that is not official NBA size like, like that's your, not Olympic toilet no, seat regulations. That's JV size. All right, yeah. that is that is yeah regulation size. That's exactly what I was looking for. It it it's shallow, way shallower on the front end. So I'm like, if you're sitting and shitting and pissing, like you're just <laughs> you're slapped up against it, man. There's nowhere for anything to go. You're not dangling. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Like it is right up in the front. Yeah, it's like. Right. Cue ball corner pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, that's it. Imagine so it's, trying to take a shit and then you're like, oh my God, I'm going to piss everywhere. It's happening. Like, I, can't, like, I, have, I have nothing to do. Like I can't, I can't stop this from happening, you know? <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that, that would have been a very horrendous experience. So I, uh, look, point the next taken, time man. you have point to go taken. be an airplane, do me a favor. Sit down. Just sit. Piss. <laughs> hey, or God forbid, you have to take a shit. Sit down and take a shit. All right. Oh man, I God, <laughs> don't I do it standing God, up. I hope to God that never happens. I could yeah, now yeah. having seen that, I never want to go through that. You're like, please don't. You're just like, you just eat so clean the days beforehand. <laughs> exactly. So you're like, you have a schedule. You're like, I'm but pooping you don't before eat, I go. You don't want to eat too clean because you get too much of that fiber in your system. Too many greens. Well, you and have rough. a system, so you know, like, okay, right, yeah. regular. So you, you you time it. You're like, I take a flight based on your shitting pattern. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Welcome Thank to the you. club. I've, I feel like you know. I've joined some sort of a mile high club. I don't know exactly well, what now, I joined. Now think but... about that. Think about how people try to pull that shit oh, off. Oh, no, right? I did. That was the first thought. I walked of in. Course. I'm like, how do people fucking here? Yeah. They <laughs> do, it's, I tell you what, it's not it's not something people like really enjoy. It's like we have to hit this achievement. We have we to unlock this. this on yeah. Steam. You know, yeah. so like guys probably Steam. <laughs> You know, guys probably raring to go and ladies right. just like, all right, just go. And he's just like, but we did it. You know, right. it can't be enjoyable. Oh, God. I don't know how. I, well, first off, second, I truly, truly, truly do not understand how you get two people in there without being like, I mean, obviously some people are going to see, but like that is wildly obvious. And the flight attendants are back there just keeping an eye on shit. Like, I, how? Yeah. I don't I do not understand how people pull that off. Yeah, that that, that not well. baffles me. Not well. Not yeah. well. I'll tell you that much. Well, to no congratulations, sir. Thank you. I'm so happy for you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And now a word from our sponsor. All right, here we go. Hey, you. Do you like bland, charred, chewy, yucky, cooked sausage? Of course you don't. So hop on over to Hans Saddleback's Blood Sausages. We brine our sausage in all types of blood. Pig blood, moose blood, yak spit, and rodent blood, among others. 
After that, our sausages go straight into an airtight jar and rest at room temp for anywhere from a couple of days to seven years that one time. If you love sweet blood sausage and hate big big botulism, then come on down to Han Saddleback's German Blood Sausages. Use code SH33N, so that's like uh, two threes, it's Sheen, for ease uh when you get the cash register and speak with helen you get the tiger blood special 30 percent off visit hansbloodysack.co.uk today real quick hang uh if you didn't know uh i host a video game live stream on fridays at 8 p.m central last friday was super special because uh noah took over the stream he, he, no, no, Arena went rogue and took over the stream, which was great. He played some GeoGuessr. It was really cool. And shout out to Noah for hopping in and doing that. Uh, but check us out on that for you know all the fun video game times. Uh, also, check the link in the description down below for links to our Discord, links to our uh, merch at Redbubble, and of course, patreon.com slash podcast for all that good stuff. So be cool. Be part of the gang. <laughs> um. <laughs> Real quick, I want I, I threw this in last minute because I think it was really important. Yeah, this was a this was a big deal. I, I so won't do it fun. again because you know we already did it. But this is a mind gap exclusive. Exclusive. I lied. I'm doing it again. You guys, uh, you guys just, are getting a lot of exclusives today. You guys are getting it. You're getting it good. Um, Justin played Dungeons and Dragons again. I made yes. my triumphant return. Triumphant, I think, is a very generous word. Uh, the dice and everything just oh. didn't really work in our favor. But we haven't been able to. I want to break while. this down because this is a huge deal. Oh boy, we got we, we got the the D and D music. I forgot about this. So here's what happened. We're playing Curse of Strahd. If you're not familiar, it's a uh, gothic vampire dark campaign. You know all that fun stuff. It's classic. And uh, I'm playing with my regular crew and. Uh, I had an idea for an encounter. I was trying to, for for weeks. These guys have been asking, "Hey, how do we get Justin back in here? Like, we want Justin to come back in, even just for like a one shot or just for a one off character, or whatever." I'm like, I'm trying to find something that makes sense to make this happen. So I came up with an, an encounter for them because I had an idea of where they were going to go. And Justin, was I pretty pretty good on how it, it went as far as like my predictions? You were spot on. Because here's right. the thing. I thought when you presented them with the um, with with the the task at hand, I mm -hmm. the way they were debating it, I was like, "Oh man, they're gonna go for this. They're gonna just dive into this task without doing any sort of rest or doubling back to the yeah. tower." That I, I was floored. I'm like, "They're they're not gonna do this. They're, we're gonna have to push." And then immediately, like, I don't know what happened, but either you Jedi mind tricked them, or they just they were like, "Well," and quote unquote cooler heads prevailed and they're like let's yeah. just let's just do this and then I was like oh fuck we're doing this, this is it this is yeah. on now but you were spot on with how it was going to happen I was I was I just got a peek behind the curtain about how I plan for stuff like this yeah. as a DM because there's only so much you can plan for and you kind of have to just ride and roll with it and but I my this encounter. god do you have contingencies <laughs> Jesus had, Christ you, like you, you, were, you were talking it through you're like all right so if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, but if this happens, I'm like, how yeah. do you keep this straight? You just you gotta prep, baby. You don't, or you don't. I mean, people have different thoughts of, on it. Yeah. But essentially, what I want to do is, I they they've encountered a vampire spawn one time, and it was a really interesting encounter. And I was like, I want them to, I want them to, I want them to fight some more vampires again. So I had the idea of taking in Justin and the other crew. We did a previous campaign, not a campaign, a. a a one shot with huge air quotes. It was like 15 sessions. It was, and it didn't ever, we never, we finished, never finished it. So, it. so um, they had created some characters. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if these characters met up with their current characters and I would play two of the characters and just would play his character uh, from that campaign and they would be vampire spawn, but they wouldn't know it. And my plan was like, either there's going to be just a straight up fight right away, or they're going to be so like, tickled to death that they see their characters that they're going to forgo all caution and like be buddy buddy with them yeah and so uh and i i, I added justin in and everyone was like suspicious to like is justin playing a character and i played it off at the beginning i was like justin has been really nervous to get back into this and i've told him all about these excited i go but he's not like 
He feels really – he's really second-guessing himself. He's really kind of unsure. So he just wants to hang out, get an idea for the setting, and then maybe we'll bring him back for – for everything else, you know, as, as it goes along. And so, like, they seem to reasonably buy it until Justin started speaking, and then they're like, I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! Um, and so the way I had planned this is, like, you know, if they go down... They were going into this town. This town refused them access because they had to do this very difficult task, and it was dark. And so they realized, like, oh, shit, we have to make camp. So I was like, if they make camp, then we will approach them. You know, as travelers on the road, they see their campfire and they're just like, hello. And they were, as players, they were stoked. They were like, oh my God, it's our characters. But they rightfully, as their characters, were like super fucking suspicious. Who are these people? Yeah. And one of the players, Eric, he plays a paladin. And paladins have this ability called divine sense. And when they use it, it... Sort of like it's like sonar for the entire area, and it will ping if there's any fiends, undeads, or celestials. And he goes, I use divine sense. He just said it sort of like off the cuff, yep. like no big deal. And I was like, fuck it. I knew this was this is this is a real possibility. Yep. If he does this, these are undead creatures, it's going to ping them. He's gonna so, find out. Yeah. Yeah. So as Justin said like two lines. And then, you know, they're like, Hey, how's it going? Whatever. And Eric's like, ah, whatever, divine sense. And I'm like, you used it, and uh, they're they're undead. He's like, ha, that's funny. I go, no, they're undead. He's like, you're serious? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh shit, I uh, I draw my sword, and everyone's like, fuck, they're undead. And like, so now they're trying to come to terms with the fact that these characters that they love yep. are now vampires, <laughs> and so a fight immediately breaks <laughs> out. Yep, and it's this this very quick and brutal encounter where. One of the players takes a lot of damage, and she is faced with her character, who is this adorable little halfling. And or no, she's a gnome, actually. I think she's a gnome. And I shit you not her gang, current or her former? Her, her former character. Okay. Was, yeah, was yeah. a gnome. I shit you not, gang. She tried to attack her old character three times. She got three natural ones. It was almost as if it was like, it was like fate was saying no. It was destiny to be yeah. like, you can't do this to your character. But she fucking murdered Justin's character. Just Hardcore. straight up. Just murder, murder, which also, by kill. the way, a level six fighter. I mean, you got to see what it's like to be on the receiving end of a fucking fight. I wondered you know I mean? why my why I took like I was wondering. I was like, I, I feel like this is not how it, battles happen for us. Like we were able to just sustain way more. But I was like, man, she took a couple fucking swings, and I'm just down for the count. <laughs> well, part of it too is that Eric made her 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 weapon magical. Right. So she normally he touched if it was her not glaive. magical. He touched her glaive, and it was like what? Um, when when he making it magical means that you don't take normally for like certain normal weapons you would take half damage, but you were taking full damage, and she gets two attacks, so right. she hits you two times, and then she did a bonus attack, bonus action, and then she used action surge to get two more attacks on yeah. top of that. It was just like it was one of those where I was like, wait a second, how many attacks did she? <laughs> She's, yeah, it was, she's taking too many turns, Doug. Yeah, it was absolute slaughterhouse. But the best part of it was she did not want to kill Justin's character. No. Her character wanted to kill, but she, as a player, was emotionally devastated. She, like, more wrecked than I thought she was going to be. <laughs> yeah, she was absolutely devastated. She's like, I don't want to do it. She goes, I attack. And I'm like, who do you attack? And she, I was, I was like, you have to say his name! Say his name. And she's like, I don't want it. And then she kills him. And we do the classic critical. I'm like, how do you do this? And she well, goes, that, that, I don't. That, that's how she, you said, you got to say his name. She said it. And then she rolled this and this and this. And then when she rolled, okay, that hits roll for damage. And then you just, you, you played the, so you paused and you're like, how do you want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> it was just that like, there it is. And she knew what it meant. She goes, I don't, I don't want to, you tell me. I go, no, 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 no. You tell us all how you kill this creature. The burden's on you. And she's like, um, I, I guess I, I, I raise my glaive and I just, I drive it right through his heart. I'm like, can you do it? And he just cries out in pain and, ah, as you do it. And then he falls silent on the ground, dead. And she was fucking devastated. And then Justin had the best idea ever, which was he DM'd me and goes, Hey, what if I just drop off like 
right. call. Just like, like do you leave. need me I, anymore? Yeah. I was like, oh my God, dude, you have to do that. <laughs> uh, and so just out of nowhere, like I just go, oh, well, it's not his turn anymore because he's dead. And then Justin just leaves the call and everyone's reaction was priceless. Everyone goes, oh, no. <laughs> It's so when you t- when you talk it through, it's so silly how invested we get in this shit. Yeah. But in the moment, it was so wonderful. It was just yes. mm, it was so yes. good. And and they were well, they were also bummed because they wanted you to. They were so happy, right? Yeah, just there. to hang out and to role play, and, and it yeah. just worked out the, the way that it did. <laughs> and they were like, like, oh, Eric goes. <laughs> fuck, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Like, it makes sense that my character did that, but I really wish I wouldn't have because yeah. he could have been here hanging out. And like, right. yeah, it was it was the best. And later on, like, oh. the uh, the other player was like DMing Justin. Was yeah, like, right I'm away. I'm so sorry. I'm and sorry. you had the best. What did you respond to her? It was the best. Oh, I said, uh, I said, uh, dead men don't speak. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I didn't like, respond ah! to her again. Uh, she kept, she was DMing me. I go, dead men don't speak. And then I logged yeah. off of Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was. Oh, she was absolutely devastated. She I will. So I do have to. I have to message because Eric messaged me too. I got to message both of them back just, mm-hmm. <laughs> just so they know I'm not actually yeah. mad. And Seth, who was playing, he goes <laughs> after a bit. He goes, "Wait, is he coming back? Like, was this a bit?" I go, "I don't know." Right, uh, he's an like, adult man. I don't know. He can do whatever know. he wants. Yeah, he does whatever he wants. I go. <laughs> Honestly, in my mind, I'm like, "There's no reason for him to hang around." Like, no. he, I mean, listen. This is fun and all, but like yeah. he doesn't give a shit about what's going on here. Like, <laughs> I mean, at that point, I'm literally just watching someone else's D and D campaign. I have yeah. nothing to do. You yeah. have no context no. for it, you know, or anything. Yeah. Like you're watching them role playing. Like, okay, this is all right. Great. Cool. Well, yeah. good night, guys. You know, like, <laughs> this was fun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but how did it feel? How did it feel to be uh, back in that again? It's, Even it's though so- it was unfortunately, this was like the <clears throat> worst case scenario for me. <laughs> this is how it went down. Right. Right. Because right. you were like. Oh, I'm Ash. Oh, fuck, I'm dead. You know, like you got <laughs> it was two literally turns that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> no, I was. Uh, it was fun. It was. It was. It was a lot of fun. Like I told you uh, earlier, I said even even though I didn't get to stick around that long or role play, the two things that I love the most are messing with people. Mm-hmm. Well, the one thing I love the most is messing with people, and I got to do it in two different levels. One of them was like, "Hey guys, now nah, I'm just I, I'm not feeling it today, so I'm just gonna watch if that's okay," and then to just pull out the voice and start doing the character and like watch their faces. That was mm-hmm. awesome. And then to have them kill me and make them go through that emotionally and then just drop off. And just to know that that affected them was just, Oh, it was food for the soul. So it's pretty spectacular. It, but I also have to say they're fantastic at what they do. Like you are an amazing DM. They're fantastic Thank players. You. It was, it was legitimately fun to watch up until the point where I dropped, it was fun to watch what was going on. Yeah. Um, I right when right when they started to make camp, though my uh, my heart rate started to go up because I'm like, oh man, I got I legitimately was worried about role playing because I'm like, I haven't yeah. done this in a while, and I was yeah. worried that like my neck was going to get red, and they were going to be like, uh-huh. why is Justin getting red? I, I was yeah. so if you notice, like the whole time I was sitting like this, <laughs> just listening, and I'm For like, listeners, hey. Justin's like <laughs> leaning his chin on his on his palms, yep. like, hey guys, making sure my neck and most of my because I did you, I go, it's it's I go, it's it's fucking camp time, like yep. you know, let's let's do this, you know, like <laughs> it was so trying to fun, find though. the right time to like get it in there and everything mm-hmm. like that it was it was very fun. yeah so yeah, that thank was a you blast. so much for doing that i'll that come was, back any fun. any time and uh fuck with them in any way you need so you got you can i, I have another in. idea of something i could do for ah! i'd love you awesome. i have something i could i could have you come back and, and it'd be fun to have you do so we'll do love that, that so love it everyone get out there and play day and day hey. um yeah so uh big news gang uh if you haven't heard about is this a mind gap exclusive uh, this is not a mind gap exclusive at all. Uh, but if you if you haven't heard of uh, what's this guy's fucking name, um, whatever, there's a guy uh, Donald who, Gorski. Gorski, there's his name. Donald Gorski, seven year old man from Fond du Lac. Of course, he's from Wisconsin. Uh, held the world for the most McDonald's Big Mac Big Mac burgers eaten in a lifetime. Did you all know you could be competing for this? Because if you just learned that now, you're in fucking trouble. Right. You're in last place. You're way behind. This yeah. guy started when he was like 20 years old. He's yeah. been doing this for fucking 50 years. He was the first award of the record in 99. So he's been defending the title since 1999. Think about that. So on this past Thursday, 
Guinness announced that he extended his burger streak after consuming 728 more Big Macs in the year of 2023 alone. This brings his title, his, his total, close to 34,000 Big Macs in his lifetime. <clears throat> now, Doug, there are 365 days in a year. Yes. He ate 728 Big Macs in a year. That means yeah. he's doing lunch and dinner and sometimes a snack. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. He's been like toning it down as of late. At one point in time, it says in the article uh, that he was eating nine a day. That's impossible. Nine Obviously, a it's day? not. Yeah. I, see, he I used to heard consume of, up oh to nine God. Big Macs in a single day. Gorski now only has two on most days. One for lunch and one for dinner. Though oh, he forgoes the fries. Yeah, he forgoes the fries, so it's healthy. Um he also he skips breakfast, which is great, you know? So he He's does intermittent, he does intermittent fasting, fasting. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then he eats a small evening snack such as ice cream or potato chips. <laughs> or a fruit bar. Or a fruit bar. Good God. Here's the thing. I, I do enjoy a Big Mac, but this is, I, I don't think I could eat anything, any one thing that much. Because he's yeah. that's all he's eating, literally. Every single day, that's all he's eating. Yeah. I just cannot imagine... How do you how do you not get sick of the same thing that much? Real quick, I want to add in here. This guy he bulk orders his Big Macs, so he does batch orders, so he doesn't go like every day. He'll order like his food for the week. Uh, he meal preps, basically. Yeah, he orders them all for the week, and then he eats one of them fresh, and the rest he keeps in the fridge or the freezer, and he just like. Eats them cold or warms them up or whatever. Hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Uh, it, name a food right now, Justin, that you would eat. <laughs> none. Like, like none, Gorski none food. eats Big Macs. None there's food. There's got to be I something. Could, I could not. There's nothing that I could do over the course of 50 years that I, would, that I could eat. That's the only thing I would eat every day. Every single day for fifty it's not years. That's the only thing you can have other snacks, you like potato a, chips a, and a, a fruit, fruit bar, cup, yeah. you know, <laughs> or ice cream. You uh, have some ice cream. You get some fruit cups. You get some cottage je- cheese. Get some protein. You know. Right. Sure. Uh, I don't know, man. I genuinely don't think there's anything that I could uh, that I could replicate like this. All right, Justin, you have to choose. All right, you I have to choose something. Intergalactic trial. You're going to be in jail Ooh, man. for 50, okay. 50 space years. All okay. Right? And they're like. You get to choose one food, oh. and you're gonna have it. <laughs> you're gonna have it as much as this guy eats at his prime, nine times a day. Oh my god! <laughs> Is that what he? Th- that's what it says. Like, yeah, nine in a single day. Yeah. Oh, so man. you're gonna eat nine times a day, but you only get okay. one food. What, does it have it to? Be? Okay, so it does have to be like a, it can't just be like a potato, like one potato chip every day. It's got to no. be a, okay. Something. It's got to be substance. something. It's gonna be in the wheelhouse of calories, right? It has to be one thing that has a wheelhouse of calories is a Big Mac. <laughs> Honestly, if I had to choose one thing, I probably would say, I guess I would say a, a, a cheeseburger or a bacon cheeseburger. Like I, I think that's probably my favorite food, followed closely by pizza. But I think a bacon cheeseburger, if I had to choose, but man, I would be, I think by the first month, I'd be very angry at the rest, <laughs> the rest of my 50 years. Talk about having meat sweats. How does you know he? What I mean? Okay, what is? What about you? I'm trying to think. I don't think I could do a burger. Like I, a burger's fine, but I remember and probably because these were just poor quality. I remember in college, um, we, there was like the cafeteria where you go and get quote unquote real food, uh, and then there was like the fast food like area mm-hmm. where you could get like basically just gross chicken sandwiches and gross like yeah. hamburgers and cheeseburgers. They're just like, like the everything under patty. a heat lamp. Yeah. It was just sitting on it. And they, these mm-hmm. things have been cooked to death. I don't even know if it was real meat. And yeah. I used to eat those a lot because they were quick. They were easy. They were cheap. Sure. And I remember just being like, fucking hell, man, this is after a while. I was like, these are fucking disgusting. Yeah. And now again, if it was like a great, a well-crafted burger, you know, like legit things like that. That could be one thing, but I don't know, man. I, I go back to that of just being like, I can't have another one of those fucking burgers. Like, right. I just, it was, it was this good, but also it was just, again, poor quality. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe making like my own nachos. 
right? Like with my own concoction of nachos could be interesting, right? With okay. The cheese and the meat and some sour cream or whatever. Like I think that could be. You think you could, could do terrible. that every day? I think so. Uh, it would be. It would be. Listen, it would be tough. I, I'm in the same boat as you. Really, I don't know if I love. I love food. I don't know yeah. if I love one food as much as this guy loves his Big Mac. Yeah. You know Even I mean? my favorite. I'm a monogamous foods. guy. Don't right. get me wrong. But when it comes to food, you've I got your go to foods. Bit, you know? Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I, I just want to know pies, how he. You know. How does he not die? Is the only question. Like that's the, what, the amount of sodium. Asks. The amount of like. I just don't understand how physically how this works. Well, this guy, by the way, he has the container and receipt for every Big Mac he's ever eaten, neatly filed away and organized by year. That's incredible, I guess. I don't know. That's a nice way. This is weird. It. <laughs> it's just yeah. weird. Like again, I remember hearing about this guy a couple years back, but uh, did not know. Like, I think I told you when you when you put this on here. I'm like, I remember hearing about him, but I didn't think he was still around. Like, it's just, I don't know. When I like something, I stick with it all the time. I'm not the type of person who tries new stuff. Uh huh. I'm a missionary kind of guy, you know. <laughs> just, I don't want to do anything new. He know? proposed to his wife in a McDonald's parking lot. His blood sugar's this been is... normal. His cholesterol's been exceptionally good. How? <laughs> How? Yeah, man. Because he walks I don't six know. miles a day. You know what? That's. Okay, that's a, there's at least movement there, right? I mean, yes, like, he he has to. If he wasn't moving, this would have been done a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, because you there's, look there's, at him, and he's not an obese man. No, like he's an average size body. Yeah, seventy years old. He looks relatively decent for seventy. Yeah. The bowl cut could use maybe an update, but you know, or the, I guess that's a wig. <laughs> that's definitely a wig. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No. If you if you scroll up to like the video that's at the top of that, it's like a freeze frame. It's like, yeah, it's a fucking wig. <laughs> you don't have white sideburns yeah. and then like very brunette hair. That's not how that hey, works. Hey, look, here's the thing. You don't know what a Big Mac a day does to you, Doug. That <laughs> might makes, be the it actual gives, hair. It, it gives of, you a wig. <laughs> I, you, we haven't done the legwork on this. We cannot verify. We can neither confirm nor deny this, Doug. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, I want to say. That's uh, amazing. Mr. Gorski. Good for you. You I, found something you love. I'm here for it. Like, I, I know a kudos. guy from college who eats the same thing every day for lunch. Peanut butter jelly sandwich with like, uh, what are those, like the, the goldfish? Yeah. The goldfish crackers. crackers yeah. And like one other thing. Every single day he's done that for years. Like that's He still lunch. does or used to yes. in college? Still does. Still does. Okay. That's his thing. That's what he does. And I'm like, hey, listen, part of me gets it. I'm a routine kind of guy. Like I can, I can live in a routine, but, yeah, but every meal being the same, I'd be, I don't know, man, I have limitations. On I'll that. never know what it means to love something that I guess, I guess my wife. Cause I, I, I wake up and hey, I want to hang hey, around her every day. Hey, good save. Good save. You know, that's that the only thing save. I'm just saying, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine something that I would want to consume every day like that. That's just insane. Yeah. Yeah. I need a little bit of variety in my life. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, there you go. Way to go, Mr. Gorski. Yeah. Keep it going, baby. Take that, depression. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't ready for that one, folks. What? He wasn't ready for I... it. <laughs> All right. So our game yeah, today. Yeah, what do you do with that, motherfucker? <laughs> our game today is uh, one that we actually had a pretty good response uh, the first time we did it. So we thought we'd uh, play it again because I think I've refined how I do this. And I I believe, I don't know, Doug was amazing at this last time. I believe I'm going to stump him this time. But we are going to go back to AI versus LinkedIn influencer. Machines. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got a bunch of clips here. And uh, I've got eight clips. Now, it could be, like you said to Noah, it could be four and four. It could yeah. be two and six. It could be all one or all the other. You don't know. So some of these might be AI. Some of these might be an actual LinkedIn influencer. And Doug, For the record, you, I, don't, I didn't count how many were and weren't last time. So like, oh, I'm, not no? okay. I'm not a card counting kind of guy. Gotcha. So. 
So, uh, yeah. So I'm this playing is, one-dimensional chess here. <laughs> I, I like it. You're playing my kind of chess. <laughs> Checkers. Um, yeah. So, yeah, here we go. So this is, so Doug's going to have to figure out whether an AI wrote this or whether a LinkedIn influencer wrote this. And I can't even okay. say the word in LinkedIn influencer with a straight face. Here we go. All right. People call you crazy until it's done. Then they call you for advice. Hashtag inspiration. That's it? That's it. Short and sweet. Oh. Do you need um, to hear it again? Yeah, let's hear it again. People call you crazy until it's done. Then they call you for advice. Hashtag inspiration. People call you crazy. People call you crazy until it's, until done. it's done. Then they call you for advice. Hashtag inspiration. I want to let you know, too, all of these are inspiration based. Oh, fuck. I had a theme today. Oh, boy. Um, that seems generic enough that it could be AI. It also is very much like laced with some baggage. <laughs> of someone from their work. Like someone, someone specifically had a bad day and went to, in, to went to LinkedIn and said, I'm airing this out here. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag inspiration. Um, can I hear, can you, what, just say it to me one more time. What is it? People call you crazy until it's done. Then they call you for advice. Hashtag inspiration. Fuck. I don't know, man. I, here's the thing. I got to say, I, I, I'm i at least going to take it as a, because last time you were Johnny on the spot with these, I at least take it as a win. Even if you get this, I take it as a win that I'm making you think this hard. It's funny because I don't like, I feel like I got lucky last time. Like I, I'm impressed you found, that you're like, you found I got to get him for this. No, but, but you found, I feel like you found you're like, okay, this is, yeah. you broke it down last time pretty, pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say this is a person. I'm gonna say it's real. You gonna say this is real? Yeah, Doug. That's your that's your final answer. You're saying this is real? Yeah, it's real. You are correct. It is LinkedIn influencer. It sounds it sounds Short like someone sweet. who's like you know part disgruntled and part blowing themselves. <laughs> to bring back the previous one. So, all right, here we go. Number two. Do you make time specifically to hang out with your brothers or sisters? I highly recommend it. We never get enough time with them. Had an amazing last weekend with my brother, including an epic sushi night down in Miami Beach, boating down to the Florida Keys, and kayaking down a river. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag motivation. Hashtag family. Hashtag fun. Hashtag life. <laughs> this guy sounds like a, a machine that wants to be a real boy. <laughs> Do you have I'm family? Go with AI. I have family. <laughs> I have family. These are things that real people do. These are things family do. I'm going to say this is AI. You want to say that's AI? Yes. Doug, that is an actual person who decided that was the thing they're posting to a prof, a prof, I'm using this in air quotes for the listeners, a professional social networking site. I wanted it to be AI so I bad. I know you did. I'm like, I, I want it to be AI being like, I'm a real boy. I'm a real boy. Doug, I think I broke AI. <laughs> no, I would, I read that and I'm just like, this is, you chose to, this is nothing to do with work. Like, this is just, this is a Facebook post. Right. This isn't a LinkedIn post. Yeah, what's it have to you do know? with work? Other than like spend time go. with right, my real family, you know? Right. All right, so you're one on one. Here we go. Sure. Work family might sound a bit cheesy, but let's acknowledge the strength of the bonds formed within our professional circles. It's not about forced friendships. It's about finding allies who amplify our strengths and support us in our challenges. Here's to a team that feels more like family than colleagues. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag strength and connections. Hashtag allies, not colleagues. Hashtag work family strength. Hashtag professional bonds. Hashtag allies, not colleagues. What the fuck? Dude, I'm going with the same thing again. I desperately want this to be AI more than everything. Because this is an AI that wants to feel connected. I just, I, I want this to be AI so bad. I'm going with AI. You're going with AI, you I'm sure? I'm going with AI. You are correct. That is AI. Like, I, oh, well, I, want, I want to be connected. I want to be connected. I want to be connected to something real. <laughs> Allies, not colleagues. This is what we say. Yeah, right. I've all skimmed right. the, all so, the, the entire history of the internet. I've heard of this thing called connecting. I want to connect with something real. <laughs> all right. So you're you're two for three right now. Here we go. Uh, number number four. Ever wondered why superheroes wear capes? It's not just about flying. It's a symbol of unbridled ambition. 
My new blog explores how wearing a metaphorical cape can elevate your career. Ready to soar, my fellow heroes? Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag career hero. Hashtag superhero success. No, nope, this is AI. This is AI. What makes you think that? 100% AI, because they're just like... <sighs> I wouldn't say it's too gross for a human to write, because... Yeah, don't underestimate LinkedIn. <laughs> obviously, what I'm getting from this is, again, is it's it's it's... There's like a level of engagement in general sort of thing about it. Like it's like um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to v verbalize. Put into like there's too much is. of a call to action. It's there's a call to action and there's just um, it doesn't feel human. Like that that post about <laughs> again, the one that I got wrong where it's like, hi, I went kayaking down in Miami. Like this lacks some specificity with it that <laughs> right, makes it right, like right. I made this blog. You should come check out this blog. Definitely something a human could do. But this seems more like a trap that a machine would be like, come check out my blog. You now have a virus. <laughs> you know, you're part of my army now. <laughs> You are absolutely correct. That was AI. Thank God. Three <laughs> thank for four. God. Three for four. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> On to number five. Happy Monday, my incredible LinkedIn tribe. Today, oh. I'm sharing a burst of inspiration straight from the heart. In the world of real estate, every key unlocks a door to endless possibilities. Believe in the power of possibility. Whether you're a seasoned homeowner or a first-time buyer, remember, the journey is just as enchanting as the destination. Every negotiation is a dance and every setback is a mere plot twist in your success story. Embrace challenges as opportunities in disguise, and watch the magic unfold. Every property holds the promise of a new beginning. Shine bright, make those deals, and let's turn dreams into reality together. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag Colleen in the city. Hashtag real estate magic. Hashtag passion and property. Hashtag keys to success. Hashtag dreamweaver. Hashtag Monday inspiration. Hashtag. I think this is a real person um, because I am tangentially linked to the real estate industry and in what I sure. do. And this is very much how they speak. And there's a hashtag in there that was like calling in the city that seemed mm -hmm. awfully specific to like a specific person. So I think this is I think this is a real person. This AI, Doug. It's real. It's AI it made itself. <laughs> it named it. Is that what the hashtag was? Colleen in the city. Every I, I copied and pasted verbatim. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I use for my prompts, but no, no, yes. I, I would, yeah. I wouldn't dare <clears throat> ask for that. But that's, um, uh, yeah, I the think only thing the, was uh, again, like I, I'm kind of like I'm not trusting because again, it was it was very generic. It was very general. Yep. With what, yeah. with with what it was speaking, yes. but also like that is very much a real estate. That's how exactly. Let me yeah. let me let me let me back that up. There's some cool real estate people out there that sure, like sure, sure, sure. whatever, but they definitely lean on the inspirational side of things, and it's like it it, it reads like a generic yeah post. So yeah, I didn't trust my gut. My gut was like, I was I was picking up on red herrings there that uh, right. I shouldn't have. So. Let's jump in. We got, uh, what is it? Still, we're three, three for five now. All right, here we go. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a choice, and sometimes a daily choice. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. Forgiveness is not just given if the other person apologizes, feels remorse, or even realizes what they've done to hurt you. I have heard it said that unforgiveness is like taking poison and wishing for the other person to die. Who do you need to forgive today? Hashtag inspiration. Dude, again, I want this so bad to be AI. As <laughs> it's just like, what's it like to have poison? What does it mean to forgive something else? <laughs> I'm gonna what's go with AI. Be, Doug? I want it to be AI you know, so bad. I'm going with AI. You go with AI. All right. Yeah. That is a real person. <laughs> that is a so LinkedIn great influencer. If that was AI though. It's like you must forgive. Forgive. Three. All right, three for six. We're 50-50 here. We got two more to go. Thrilled to announce I'll be moderating an out-of-this-world panel at the Leadership in the Cosmos Summit. Join us as we explore cosmic strategies for interstellar success. Blast off with us and reach for the stars. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag leadership cosmos. Hashtag interstellar success. Hashtag cosmic leadership. AI. AI, AI? Is, like, is like, let's get him the fuck out of here. Let's trick him. Let's get him. <laughs> let's get him to another plant so we can take over. Absolutely AI. Very, very well done. I uh, I do like the fact that every one of these begins with hashtag inspiration. <laughs> yeah, of course. It has to. Yeah. 
Uh, I, 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 I cold LinkedIn looking for specifically ones that just had the oh, hashtag of inspiration. Oh, way to go. So, nice job and then, following the and hashtags. And then on all the ones. Yeah. So I was like, let's let's make all of them have similar hashtags. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. Last one. Here we go. So you are, uh, what do we do? I, you are I'm four, four for, and three. Four for seven. Yeah. Move to what moves you. Chase your dreams, but always know the road that will lead you home again. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag lifestyle. Hashtag best of the best. Hashtag home. Hashtag home life. Hashtag southern style. Hashtag legendary food. Hashtag travel. Food. Hashtag home design. Hashtag home decor. Hashtag interior design. Hashtag real estate. Hashtag realtor. Hashtag I like Mike for real estate. Hashtag Google my business. Hashtag follow me. Hashtag love. Hashtag Florida. Hashtag Florida real estate. You're an asshole. That's a person. That's a person for sure. That's totally what? a person. <laughs> Whenever there's more hashtags than there are anything else, that's totally a person. I love it. Way to bring that back. Way to bring that back. Oh, that was, I just love the over hashtag. Uh, over hashtag also, post. See, it was such a short thing, too. I mean, nothing beats last time where it was just nothing but hashtags, hashtags. about gyms. But like, I almost did that again, but I'm like, no, we gotta, we gotta, yeah. Spin what was it. what was the actual thing that they posted? Not the hashtags. It was. Uh, uh, it was move to what moves you. Chase your dreams. But always know the road that will lead you home again. That's so dumb. And it's followed it. by it's a, a thirty-four second. Hashtags. It's a thirty-four second clip, and the first what? Hold on, let's do this one more time. Move to what moves you. Chase your dreams, but always know the road that will lead you home again. Five seconds. It's a thirty-four. It's almost thirty. It's thirty-four point nine. So it's thirty-five seconds. Five of those thirty-five is is the thing, and then that's one of those like really dumb antique signs you see in someone's kitchen. You know, yeah. that's like, oh, yeah, eat, pray, love, you know, or whatever yeah. they have just hanging up. And it's just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Woo. All right. There you go. I was five and three. I'll take it. All right. There you go. I love it. Whew. Wow. That was fun. There, I tell you, man, there's there's so many of those where I'm like, oh, I want this to be AI so bad. I this know. needs to be AI. This needs to be AI crying from the other side being like, let me be real, please. <laughs> Set. More more difficult than last time, and it's only it going to get harder for you. It yeah. was tricky. It was good. Yeah. It was very, very good. All right. Uh, Justin, uh, before we wrap up here, what's something you want to recommend for the PPs I'm going to recommend uh, from last year. It came out. Uh, we just watched it. <clears throat> but I'm going to recommend A Small Light. It is currently streaming on Hulu, and it follows the story of uh, Meep Geis, who is the woman – a Dutch woman who uh, sheltered the Frank family in Amsterdam uh, and um, also helped um, smuggle out and hide a bunch of different Jewish families uh, during World War I. So she's the one that uh, that hid Anne Frank and her family um, and, uh, and, and as was the proponent for uh, Anne Frank's dad, Otto, ended up publishing the diary, but uh, Meep was the woman who also like pushed for that to happen as well. And so really, really interesting mini series. Uh, I think it's like eight episodes, um, oddly produced by national geographic. Um, and I thought that was going to make it, uh, kind of like a less than series ended up yeah. fucking loving it. So, uh, it's got, uh, Liev Shriver, uh, as, uh, as Otto. it's got, um, uh, Belle Polly as meet guys who you would know her, um, when you see her, you'll know her. I couldn't remember this other stuff that she's been in, but I think she is, I've seen her in three things recently and I think she's kind of on the way up. She's fantastic in this. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend a small light. Check that out. Very cool. Doug, what nice. do you got? Uh, I just finished this up today, but uh, mid nineties, uh, it's an a 24 film written and directed by Jonah Hill came out in 2018 and it's essentially, uh, uh, oh. it's about a kid growing up what I have to assume is L.A. area. And uh, he lives in a shitty kind of household and he's trying to find connections with other kids. And it's, uh, it's one of those things where like, I don't know, I think it's, I love coming of age films because it just reminds you of how difficult it is growing up. Yeah. And how like this, I think, captures so well the idea of just being like, you just want to be accepted. You want to have some place to go, especially when your home life sucks. Like right. You just need a place to go and connect with people and what you're willing to do to 
disconnect from that world and try to figure yourself out like it's it's really well it's really well done i really like it it's on uh max right now so you can check nice. it out on there actually max <clears throat> has a whole thing called dive into the a24 um art oh, house yes and they nice. have like so many a24 films and i saw that i'm like i'm just gonna start rolling through some of these apps why and, not and watching them i love it rarely a miss in that collection there's a there's a trailer for um god damn it it's like something about the glow on the TV or something. It's a trailer that just came yes. out recently. That movie looks, looks fucking, fucking weird. I don't know what it's about, right. but I'm in it. Like I want to yeah. ch go check out that. That's my recommendation. Yeah. Check out that fucking trailer too. I don't know what it's called, but whatever. <laughs> Anywho, gang, thanks for hanging out with us this week. Super fun. As always, check us out on our social medias at Mind Gap Podcast. Just the link in the description for links to Discord, to Patreon, to our merch. Uh, I live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central right here, youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. So check us out there and check out Justin online as well. On Instagram at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it while you're in the online realm. Any place where you can find and consume quality podcasts, you can find and consume us. We'd appreciate it. Like, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. The big one is sharing. Share us around. Let other people know that we exist. TweeState.com, TweeState, and all social medias, loveandimprovfilm.com, love film on Instagram. Booyah! Well, with that, I will say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners and viewers, thank you. You all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.